All right, so this deck came across my desk earlier in the week via PMs from the original source, and I wanted to actually talk about this because this deck honestly has potential, and I think it's worth exploring because of um, what it's got going for it. So this is ABC Danger Sky Striker, and the first thing you're probably thinking to yourself is, what the fuck is this train wreck? I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know what this is. So the ARG Invitational was last weekend. Um, it would have been a week and a half now, something like that. But this deck got 17th place. This bubbled from top 16. Granted, there were only 65 players in the room. Um, oh, no, 67 players in the room for this event. So here's the thing. reason I want to look at this is because this is a very interesting theory. We haven't seen anything like this be implemented in a hot minute. Um for things and there's also a combo i have here um for you guys as well to those of you that are like what the what the fuck did this guy smoke before this event no it's not the case this is originality i think at its best if not it's a montage of just degeneracy so kind of something to know all right i had to go get the the name um of the duelist but it was edgar lewis colazzo finishing on that fucking bubble man like that's got to suck. It's it's just kind of rather unfortunate that stuff like this ends up happening and you just end up bubbling. So anyway, we'll go through the deck here. We'll talk about the tournament report and things like that. So I, I like I said, I think it's cool to explore this for the theory um, that this duelist has going here. So let's dig into this. So we have triple A, triple B, and triple C. Some of you might think that this is a little bit heavier. I mean, Calvin Don would probably argue these ratios for things but here's the thing um you you can cut a c and still get away with it but for the way that this is looking right now you do two things you just abc and you go <laughs> it's super simple now we are playing three bigfoot one nessie um it is so this is draw power can ditch a piece and you get potential special summon ability um i, I think that's what he was going for here we'll, we'll talk about this in the report and then two gold two silver Wrapping up the monster lineup. No hand traps. That's it. Like, and permanence is all you're going to get here for hand traps. Huh. I am so intrigued by this already. Spells, we have two called by the grave. One monster reborn. One desires. One afterburners. Triple horned drones. One widow anchor. Triple engage. Triple terraforming. And triple hanger. We've definitely seen that afterburners. Like, if this is anything you take from the Trickstar engine that was originally using the Sky Striker engage, that removal card is so like it's so powerful for what the deck actually needs and does. And then we have triple impermanence, two solemn strike. And he did tell me that a lot of people are going to question the strike. And he said that, honestly, Strike was one of the best damn choices he could have made all fucking weekend in his deck. This card was really, really good to him. Um, being able to stop uh, just a lot of... Here, this was his exact quote. A lot of people question the Strike. Strike is still a hell of a good card against Goki. Um, I noticed, uh, even going second, I could still play, since a lot of them don't end with Cerberus in their combo anymore. Um with the majority of them. So when they try gate to negate, uh, they get met with a strike. So definitely something to know. I, I, I think it's kind of cool. Uh, you can essentially use this to basically stun the opponent and make sure that you can continue on along with your day. Now, <clears throat> down here we have one summon sorceress, one Kagari, one Hayate, one Reproticus, one Genios, one Unicorn, one Phoenix, one Cerberus, one of the Hip Hoshingen, one Deco Talker, one Boral Sword, one Dweller, and a triple ABC Dragon Buster. And then the side deck we have two Ash, two Cyber Dragons, two Ghost Ogi, one Chimera Tech Fortress, one Mega Fleet, two Hatronade, two Twin Twisters, one anti or two Anti Spell, and one Imperial Order. Wrapping up the main deck. Now, as I said, to some of you, this might look like a pile of cards. But there was a theory planned for this event, and it lo really looks like it kind of paid off. Um, the overall combo itself uh, isn't really that intensive, but it can it can do a lot of crazy stuff here. So we'll dig into the report, and then we'll talk about the general, I guess, line of play that we had going here. 
All right, so tournament report. We had round one was against Altergeist. Um, he said it was a snowball deck. Um, once it gets going, it's hard to stop. And he did the early game, both games, and destroyed me. So this deck does seem like it does lose to decks that can kind of get rolling and just kind of set up these... Uh, I, I want to say just snowball -y effects, like things that kind of slow you down. Round 2 is against Pendulum, Magician. He said he won. Uh, he goes first both games with two negates, but I open the nuts, which is Hanger, two drones, Engage, and Gadget. Uh, see him get over his board and control the game. So, got over the board. It wasn't really anything too special being produced there. So, it seems relatively easy. Once again, Pendulum shouldn't be in... When your whole deck is a combo deck like this, you should have no real problems getting over those would-be big boards. Round three was uh, against Lightsworn. He said, uh, easy win. Um, Buster took care of any problem, which Buster should actually do in these matchups. So there's that. Round four was against Trickstar. Uh, Mech Knight, uh, he won this one. He said he opened the Nets game one with Buster Decode Strike. That's a yikes for me, dog. It's actually, I, I guess, I guess it's something. I uh, said game two, he decided to go second and went first and opened all the second cards, and I was able to Boral Sword OTK. So, <laughs> fun fact: if your opponent knows you're siding in an appropriate mode for something, they can take advantage of that situation and force you into a game state that you don't want to find yourself in. I think we, it's it's a mind game of a mind game. So. You know, just because you're citing for one appropriate way, you might want to make sure that you've got cards for both particular sets of the matchups. So, round five was against Paleo. I uh, said one. He said drones won me the game, um, the match plus hanger. So, hey, it seems to be our general combo here. And then round six was against Altergeist. Same reason as round one, game three, lost in time by 100. Uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! and the match procedures. They... Truly are the bane of our day. And in round seven, his final round he lost. Um, he actually said his opponent opened up the, the insane paleo combos. Question mark, question mark. I didn't actually know paleo had insane combos. But once again, I, if we've noticed anything about this particular matchup so far, it's those slow, grindy decks. Um, tend to stop the explosiveness that this deck wants to put on the table and present itself. Now, 4-3 is not particularly good, 67 people, but once again, it's the theory behind the deck for people to quite possibly spruce this up, give it a shot, and some other things. So, take it for what you will. Now, the generalized combo here. So, he said, usually drones plus hangar, or a way to see, gives you a lot of options, including to a U-Link, but I wanted to make this build more of a control build. Surprisingly, people were struggling with Decode Buster, or Decode Plus Buster still, and usually I have it in permanence or strike to back it up. So keep that in mind. Like, literally, Decode Talker plus Buster is still a problem for some people. So he said the most basic combo here is you start off with Union Hanger, go grab B, as all, all things should be. So then you would activate drones here. So keep in mind we have this, and we have the essential setup here, um, which is... Dun -dun -dun -dun. All right, two, three card combos. So this is drones plus hanger plus C. So this is super easy. Um, it actually kind of just hurts. So you start off with union hanger, um, bada bing, bada boom. You're going to go search for B. As soon as we have B established in the hand, you're going to drones uh, make Kagari. So, literally, you make Kagari, you re-grab back the drones, drones again, and then what you end up doing at this stage is you go and make our friend OTK Enabler, which is, this is the reason why this deck is good, uh, Reproticus. So this guy allows you to declare one monster type and basically warp that monster's name into it. So, what we're going to end up doing here is we're going to normal summon C underneath Reproticus. At this stage, um, we're basically going to make an attempt to 
change the type. So you're going to use his effect to change C into a dinosaur. All right, so at this stage, bada bing, bada boom. Keep in mind we did not use Union Hanger's effect there. Um, I think that's something that a few people are going to be like, hmm, think emoji. So at this stage, you go ahead and use C to special summon our friend B from the deck, so or from the hand. So at this point, we have summon sorceress locked and loaded. So essentially, you could bring out whatever piece you need at this point. So we're going to go ahead and use summon sorceress here to go and special summon our friend Mr. A over here. So now at this stage, we've done the basic summon sorceress combo for literally nothing. So here's what's going to be kind of costly. You literally just take these three and go ahead and warp into the... Where are you, Decode Talker? All right, you just shit out Decode Talker. And then bada bing, bada boom, you literally, for essentially free, have loaded up for our boy ABC Dragon Buster uh, for no real reason. Now, this combo he didn't include um, when to Union Hanger, uh, so that's just kind of something uh, to include. So Summon Buster, if you have any traps, set them leaving you with three to four cards in hand, and if you haven't done any no particular things yet, um, yeah, um, depending on how things go, um, you'll be able to kind of just set up more. Um, you've also should have, um, when you brought out the A here, you would have equipped, uh, which would have given you essentially um, another piece in hand to do your thing. So keep in mind, Reproticus just grants you additional monsters, um, or a, a cute little way to make Summon Sorceress for free when producing this board. So uh, he said the danger cards allowed me to go to one or two of their cards with Buster to banish um, and Bigfoot to pop also. So that's actually kind of cool. The opponent opened up a discard effect. Uh, he could essentially trigger his own pieces. So it's kind of something to note. Um, he was using those cards as a defensive means um, with Dragon Buster, being able to just offload multiple effects. So kudos to you, Mr. Edgar. Um, I will say I'm very impressed with the deck, and it does definitely take theory to another level. So tell me what you guys think about the deck list down below in the comment section. Definitely probably not something original a lot of people have seen, but definitely a new effective use to the pieces. All right, guys. I the ride never ends, guys. Make sure you enable those notifications to get the latest videos that are being posted on this channel. Make sure you guys check out Van Cole 40 for my Cardfight Vanguard channel. And join me and House of Champions on the Zodiac Duelist TV Twitch stream. I will be interacting with our audiences. And please check out No Limit Gaming and LGTCG.com for the cheapest trading cards on the market. Thanks for watching, guys, and please have a good day.